you can't cultivate your passion until you really fully establish a relationship with your passion. And as vague as that sounds, it really just means identifying what's holding you back and then identifying people and a support network and resources that will help you get to that next step. I'm Hari Srinivasan. Thanks for watching. For the next five minutes, I'm going to party like it's on sale for $19.99. TV Asia, keeping the community connected. Over the past several years, there seems to be an increasing presence of South Asians in media, publications in the general media landscape, to public figures and characters that have made their way into mainstream programming. But some South Asian women noticed a gap, and that's when Brown Girl magazine was formed. Hi, my name is Trisha Sibujawalia, and um, I'm the CEO at BrownGirlMagazine.com. So the original founder started it for one reason, and that was because she felt there was a void of, of South Asians in mainstream media and on TV. And this is, you know, now almost a decade ago, there was, you know, no Superwoman or Lily Singh or Mindy Kaling or, or you know, Hasan Minhaj gracing our TVs and our magazines. Um, and of course, social media wasn't where it is now. And so the lack of South Asian faces and voices on both mainstream and online um, really encouraged and motivated her to start something of her own. So what exactly does Brown Girl magazine do? The mission revolves around storytelling. Sections of the magazine range from culture to lifestyle to highlighting communities and events all over the world. I am the only full-time person at the company. We do have about 200 um, passionate freelancers who are on board um, from 12 different time zones around the country and around the world. What Brown Girl magazine has been able to do is cultivate what is known as a geo-ethnic storytelling system. But let's back up. An idea central to Brown Girl magazine content is the sense of community. And this is also central to the communication infrastructure theory, which describes how individuals feel encouraged to participate and solve problems when they are incorporated in a neighborhood storytelling network. A major key of this network is geo-ethnic storytelling, so storytelling that uses both location and ethnicity that can then affect the way individuals behave and engage in the neighborhood. Geo-ethnic storytelling focuses on three levels and ways of telling stories. The first is the macro level, which includes mass media and other institutions. The second is the meso level, which includes local and ethnic media and community organizations, and serves as the linker between the macro level and level number three, which is the micro level. Those are interpersonal networks, so the people in the storytelling system themselves. So with its team and reach spanning all over the world, Brown Girl Magazine is able to use all three methods of storytelling to build a South Asian community. No matter where you live, you can still be a member of that community by connecting with the other storytellers in the network. As an ethnic media outlet, Brown Girl Magazine informs immigrants what is going on where they're originally from and where they're residing now, and involves them to engage in events and collective problems in the community. I think the reason it works is because they do it on like a multitude of platforms, so they don't just exist online. They do in-person events, they do events that are totally um, cultural and then they also do events that are like just music related or just like this art thing or whatever so it's, it's not always about being brown they have other like avenues as well there's not people that look like us or you know necessarily have the same thought processes or issues as us and what brown girl does is it creates a place for those issues for those voices um, to be heard but this is a daily effort a ceo Trisha Sukujavalia explains. We are trying our best to become a full-fledged sustainable company and for that I am playing multiple roles throughout the day so my day consists mostly of business development so that's bringing on campaigns and sponsors. Um, I'm playing um, a pretty big role um, when it comes to overall social media marketing so any of our pages from Facebook to Twitter to Instagram I have um, a, a pretty good handle of what's going on. Um, and then of course, editorial as well. My eyes and ears are on the ground when it comes to our content because that is our bread and butter. So um, we do have um, a pretty vast team of 15 editors 
um, and each editor has their own smaller team of contributors. But at the end of the day, um, we do need an, an overall eye um, for all the content that we are pushing out. The magazine provides a venue, online and in person, for members of the South Asian community and its allies to engage in conversations find a sense of belonging, and further understand their social identity. And this is how Brown Girl Magazine puts social identity theory into practice. It describes how individuals identify themselves in and categorize social groups using numerous factors from class to family upbringing, values, attitudes, and beliefs. Individuals get to use their own personal identity to further define and understand their social identity. Besides daily articles, BGM hosts events like Slashy Summit that help attendees network, learn from professionals in various fields, and cultivate their passions to pursue financial independence. Slashy stands for pursuing a side hustle, including careers and hobbies that are atypical of the South Asian community, as they aren't seen as producing a reliable monetary income to support the family. I wanted to experience what the Slashy Summit would be like. I have a lot of friends on Brown Girl Magazine. I read Brown Girl Magazine avidly. I'm a big fan of uh, what it stands for. And I've never had a space before where I can network with other South Asian women and see like what their day jobs are and also their hustle. I also do a lot of like volunteer work in politics and it was cool to have an event that's catered to people who have a nine to five but then also have a side hustle, like me. So much of what we're doing at Brown Girl is, is possible and capable because, you know, 200 other Splashies are passionate about it and they want to pursue it. So that's kind of where the idea of Splashy Summit stems from. Honestly, it's a beautiful extension of what we're creating at Brown Girl and the a community that we've already cultivated, we're now bringing it to Splashy Summit. Not only were there 500 attendees and speakers, there were also nearly 50 small businesses and partners who were given a platform to share their passions and products with the BGM community. I came to Flashy Summit uh, for a couple reasons. One, I have partnered with the Brown Girl magazine in the past and I really enjoy the partnership and community that they bring. And two, I'm a recent entrepreneur in the launch of Some Ayurvedic and the summit here is like a really great community of hustlers, entrepreneurs, influencers, media professionals, and people who share the same values that we have. Well, our brand has always been geared towards women of color and South Asian women in particular. We're all South Asian, our founder is South Asian, so we definitely wanted to do, be a part of um, an event that was catering towards our community and being able to connect with other people in our community. Uh, we actually sponsored uh, the lunch today from the Gully and Louis Chinese. Uh, we sponsored a few items to correlate with the other restaurants. So I wanted to like bring some different flavors as well. So my background is I'm actually a product designer at a digital agency. So I make websites and apps and I went to school for design. So I'm always doing stuff on screen and I always wanted to do something tactile but for the community so this was a perfect project because it's more gratifying, right? When you can see something you can touch and feel. I used to be the head designer for the Metropolitan Museum. It was reopened in 2011 and what ties say like Morocco all the way to India yeah. in Islamic art, in yeah. Arabic calligraphy. So I went to NYU and I learned Arabic and I threw a huge tantrum and I said, look bro, I don't want to learn to speak it, I just need to learn to draw it. And then it expanded into Persian and then Urdu and then now Tamazight language too. So. Another theory that Brown Girl Magazine often uses is the uses and gratifications theory which implies that individuals seek out media that fulfills their needs and leads to ultimate gratification. Seven common themes that are found in uses and gratifications theory, according to four sources, include 
social interaction, information seeking, pastime, entertainment, relaxation, communicatory utility, which means being able to share information with others, and convenience utility, which means providing convenience or being useful to others, all of which apply to Brown Girl Magazine. Um, representation for South Asian communities is not really there, um, or it's just, I don't know why the information for representation on it is very selective, but it needs to get more into the masses and, uh, you know, we need, we need some unity amongst our people. Most of the other, like, South Asian publications, if you see them, they're very oriented towards like older people. Like they don't really have an emphasis on like the concerns and the topics of like South Asian women. And I can say for a fact that like throughout the years, like we have tackled so many controversial topics. We have gotten backlash for it, all manner of craziness. But I mean, I can not say that like, uh, we have continued our mission of being a platform for South Asian people, uh, especially like the younger demographic. Brown Girl has been so life changing for me because I've gotten so many opportunities opportunities that without this like this platform I never would have gotten. How many people I've met because of Brown Girl or how many things I've been able to collaborate on or how many like connections she's made for me in my life. You know, like I'm always like, I don't know if you understand how much like this wouldn't have happened if it weren't for you. That is one of the things that just amazes me is how we have come so far in 10 years from being a WordPress site to being like a company, like a legit company that's making like corporate moves.